Okay. What's up, man? <laughs> I can't see y'all. <laughs> Hold yeah, on. baby. All right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You're tuning in to another edition of the Sports Shop 27. Sorry about the technical difficulties. My camera just went blank. But, uh, hey, welcome to this edition of the Sports Shop 27. I got my host here today, Kevin Johnson, KJ. And in the middle, today's special guest, former University of South Carolina Gamecock. Yeah, and former yeah, yeah. Dallas Cowboy <laughs> defensive back. Right, right, right. Jonathan right man. Martin. What's, what's up, what's up, Martin, what's up? What's up? What's happening, my what's people? Up, man? Thanks so for having me. much, man. I'm, hey, we happy to have you on Thank the you. show, man. Sorry about the technical difficulties. Um, hey, for the people yeah, that don't know where you're happens. from, yep, let them know where you're from and a little bit about your background. All right, I'm from the one and only Columbia, South Carolina, also known as the Met. Uh, <laughs> playing football, yeah, he know KJ know about it. Grew up playing football, a little bit of baseball. Football was natural to me, so I excelled at it. Went on to uh, Richard Northeast High School, off of, over there, off of Brookfield, off of Decker, northeast side of town. Did my thing over there. I think I amassed over five thousand yards in rushing. Had about 50 touchdowns, you know, did that in three years. So uh, senior year, came out, one of the top backs in the state. The picture that you saw, the four guys, we were, uh, you know, we were top, I believe we were all like top 10 running backs. Came in the same year, Antoine Niesman, Jamie Squat, Nate, Gary, and myself. We tore it up that year, and uh, we decided to join the Gamecocks. As uh, running backs, I actually got signed on as a fullback. Nee Smith and I played fullback. Nate and uh, Jamie were uh, the tailbacks. Um, we go. We, we we came in the summer. We worked all summer. Did our thing. And uh, I got hurt in camp. Nee Smith didn't. He did his thing that year. We went one and ten. The next year, they brought in more running backs. Um, and. Uh, uh, I got moved to defense eventually. I got hurt. Then I got moved to defense. Blah, 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 blah. blah. Ended up senior year having a, a leading team in tackle. I think I was like third in the SEC that year behind Hamler. I can't remember the other guy. Um, but I had a pretty, I guess I would say, a, a somewhat illustrious career in Carolina. Okay. Um, as a spur well, safety. So I got, yeah. Let's, I got back, moved. It up for, let's back it up All a right, little back bit. It up. Let's we, go. We're going we to we start from the beginning. So for the people okay. that don't know, you from you from the, the um, northeast area with the Richard Northeast High School, right. and right. you started playing football at what age? Uh, talking like backyard football, or are we talking like Meaning organized like, football? You could say organized football. Everybody played organized football. Yeah. yeah, second grade. I was seven years old, and my first position was <laughs> right guard. Number sixty-two. Ooh, I, I hated that. I had every minute of, of that. But I was just a young jit. There was guys on the team that were nine, ten years old, but you know, bigger than me, probably faster at that time. So they put me in the line. Would let me play defense, but I did. I did good. I played hard, and I was pretty fast in too. So um, that's I was out there at Polo Road. Everybody, if you're from Columbia, you know about Polo Road. Yep. So, uh, go ahead, KJ. Hey, yeah, I, um, I know. I know. When I was younger, Michael Jordan was my favorite player. Man, uh, did you have one? Oh, Bo Jackson. First it was Walter, but then I saw Bo. Man, when Bo came in, it was it. Like I don't know a kid 
you know, during that or a, 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 a aspiring running back at that time that had a, you know anybody else other than Bo, at least in their top five. Of course, you had Barry, you had uh, Emmett. Both before those guys, you know, I remember the I remember the TV show or the cartoon he had. I remember the shoes he had, and when I found out he wasn't gonna play football oh, no more, no. I cried, man. Oh no, <laughs> yep, oh no, oh no, no, did <laughs> Yeah, I remember that commercial. So yeah, that was my guy. Yes, they were, man. Yeah. I actually <laughs> met Bo Jackson in the airport a um, couple about two years ago before COVID. And uh, like I almost dropped my draw. I don't get starstruck, but when I figured out who it was, because I couldn't believe it. You know what I mean? Dude is still huge. He's solid. His hands are thick. I doubt the month. Um, he, I'm working at the airport. He walks up to my kiosk. I'm on the phone and I'm looking like I look like Bo Jackson, but I can't be him. So I had to check the, the hand because he got the little vertigo or whatever on his hand. I said, I looked at the oh, hand. Man. I looked at him. And I was about to say, he said, shh. He ain't want nobody to know who it was. He had his hat low. He was incognito. Okay. But I knew who it was, man. Okay. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Jack. <laughs> That's what's up, man. So uh, you, you, play, you play offensive line as a kid at first. You know, you was kind of, you know, heartbroken about that. So right, uh, right. what motivates you to uh, the next year you got on the team to go and switch positions? Well, I think they knew I was going to be a good athlete, and once the older kids left, they were like, "Man, he, he, he's the guy." So uh, I played running back, and I played uh, like Mike linebacker. Pretty much when Aaron Lucas played, I played it opposite of him. Aaron Lucas, not many people know, but he was a phenomenal football player back in Polo. Me and him, they messed around, put him, me and him on the same team. Everybody had a problem with that. I don't know how they figured that out, but. We were like, I don't know, Kobe and LeBron were on the same team. That's what we would have been. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. That that's what that's what it would have been. That's what it was like for those kids. All right, but uh, yeah. So next year they they they, they put me in running back, and the athleticism and the natural everything you know, just came together, and I started doing what I do. All right. So, man. Hey, so, uh, so going into high school, did you play right away? Yes. Well, freshman year, I uh, it was me and another guy, Mike Morrell. We were only guys selected to come to varsity camp as freshmen, um, and they kept me they kept me up on, on the varsity squad. Like I did a few preseason games. I don't think I got any carries, but I know I didn't go down to B squad until they had their first game. So you know, I kind of knew they, they were, when coaches are doing stuff like that, they're just grooming you for the future because they're just trying to let you know, you know, back then I probably could have played varsity, but back then it was, you know, they were a little bit more, a lot more careful about uh, how they, how they yeah. approached it. You know what I mean? And uh, I, I probably wasn't physically ready for varsity. Mentally I might have been, but physically I was not there. Yeah, big boys. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> So you you get on the varsity a little bit, and, you know, get to practice with them. Your sophomore year, tell us what happened. Sophomore year, uh, I started at corner. So my brother, Mary Martin, smartest guy anybody in my family knows, he's a uh, professor at, uh, at Raleigh, um, North Carolina State. He was uh, a cornerback. In two in 1993, they won a state championship, or 94, 95, 94, 94. They won a state championship, and he had two picks in that game to seal that game against Hartsville. A lot of people don't know, but Hartsville used to be the team to beat back in the day, right. and uh, it was it was it was a shocker. And uh, it's been Richard Northeast only state championship ever, uh, but he had a big part in that. So he's starting on. The left corner, and I had him starting on right corner, and I also played running back. I was like, you know, backup running back. We had Kyan Jones and Skeet, guy named Skeeter. They were seniors. Um, at some point, Skeet, something happened. He left the team. Kyan, you know, he started getting hurt, and then I started getting more turn, more time. And like the last end of the season, I was starting both ways, and um, 
So, you know, I, I was getting a lot of burn my sophomore year, man. On bo- you know, both ends. I ended up with like 800 yards rushing in like four or five games. I think I had maybe five picks. I don't know how many tackles I had, but I think I had like five, five or six five picks. picks. Hey, okay. I can't remember. Maybe it might be. I might be lying. I know I had at least two or three. I know I, I can't remember all the games, but let me back up. Yeah, I didn't have five. I know I had like three. Stratford and like two other games I had a pick. Um, played against some some good players. Uh, Spartanburg, man, they had uh, I think Brian Wofford, yeah. receiver. You played with uh, yeah, yeah. Kez, you you played with him. He had me burnt one play, man. The, the quarterback threw a duck, and luckily I ran back, ran down, and you know I knocked it down. But that guy was a good ass. I remember playing against him, Jackie Robinson, um, uh, JJ McKelvey played against him. Uh, so yeah, I, I got to, you know cover some pretty good receivers back in the day. Willis Ham, right there in Spring Valley. <laughs> Shout out to Willis Ham, lady, bro. Says uh, Big L220 said, baby brother name still ringing bells in this, <laughs> in this day. That's my big brother, Lionel, <laughs> man. We he call him Lenny. Hey, he's he's, yeah, he's, he's that's my other. He's El Better. I ain't going to cut you off. My brother. No, you good. The best back I've seen. 40 carries, 300 yards. Yeah. Five TDs, one game. What? Dang, that's man. my, that, that's that's that my dog up. right that's there. That's why I had to. <laughs> tell, tell us about that. Tell us about that game right there. I want to know that's, about that game. That's Spring Valley, my senior year, man. I, I just uh-huh. it kind of bottled me up. Uh, my sophomore year, I, I think I I don't, I don't think I started that game. I didn't do too well. I don't remember playing that much. Actually, I think I had a, like an injury, a hamstring. Mm-hmm. So I, I didn't you know playing that much in that game. Junior year, I had maybe 150, but no touchdowns. So I said, senior year, man, we, you know, I gotta, I gotta give it to him. Uh, Rico Jackson was over there doing too good, and I'm like, he had himself a 300 yard game. I said, all right, he had it against Camden. I said, okay, let me get my 300 300 yard game against y'all boys. But uh, it was a fun game to watch, man. If you were in those stands, you you put on a show. Willis Ham had like 10 catches, 250 yards. Gerald had probably – Gerald Robinson, rest in peace. He might have had 15 tackles. He had the hit. That that would have been a, a ESPN top 10 hit. It, it's definitely illegal what he did to that boy. That would be a flag today. But Gerald Robinson, linebacker, he was he was uh, going to sign – he signed to Carolina initially, but uh, couldn't get in with grades. But he probably was the best – one of the best athletes I've ever seen in my life, hands down. Yeah. But uh, I just had to go off. I don't know, man. It was just something about that game. Like, like everybody, you know what I mean? It was one of those games. Yeah. A lot of people had stupid numbers in that game. Their linebacker had like 25 tackles, mostly on me, because I had like 40 carries. I literally had 40 carries that game. All right. Dang. Unheard of. Hey, so uh, did you uh, did you play any My other boy, sports in high school? Uh, I ran track. I ran I, freshman year. I played baseball, and I realized I was kind of wasting time. I need back down the track, working on my speed. So yeah. from then on, I played. Uh, I, I ran track. I wasn't good, but you know, I was just out there trying to stay in shape and yeah, you know work on my form. Yeah, for uh, real. Yes, sir. Staying busy. Staying busy. Corey Head was our coach. Too, he, uh, my, oh, oh yeah, keep him out of trouble, man. You ain't got to work. <laughs> yeah. That's one thing my parents never had to worry about me getting in no trouble. So Uh-oh. I used to fish. Yes. I know you see this this nice little tan I got. That's from fishing, man. A farmer. <laughs> I didn't take my shirt off. So anytime either one of you guys think y'all want to go out there and catch some fish, we can do that too. You do it. All right. <laughs> hey, so Chris, Chris King said, <laughs> ask John the, the time you hit Woodrow Dance on the goal line. At Harry P. Stadium, <laughs> man. Oh, oh, man. Oh, yeah, man. yeah. Now nah, I caught him. I caught him. I caught him. I caught, him. I caught Woody. Uh, it was like uh, it was really it was important. They still won that game, but it was. Uh, I think they were going for two, 
and uh, I was playing safety, and he was trying to get to the pile line, and I met him right there, and I knocked him back. And back then, Woody was, you know, he was strong, man. Like, you ain't no knocking Woody back. So I I called him, and, you know, he, he, I ain't going to say he went back, but he definitely went side. He didn't go forward. He went sideways. But, you know, it was yeah. hard to get a look. If you played against Woody in high school, it was hard to get a solid lick on that dude, man. You know, I, I just got luck. I think the corner – you made the receiver do something, and I just happened to time it up at the right time. I caught him good. Craig King said he had heard around South Carolina. Brandon Kelly said, my little big girl. I don't know about that, man. You, you were my lineman in Pee Wee. Oh, I man. Was up, That's my dude. I was up with fullback <laughs> in high school. And then Craig King said yeah. he did so- more than caught. <laughs> <laughs> That's my cousin Craig. So, you know, okay. Craig, you know, he beat cancer. He actually, my cousin Craig King, a lot of people oh, yeah. know him. Congratulations, uh, Craig. As an educator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big big ups to him. Yeah, he's writing man. books. He's, he's uh, impacting, you know, he's impacting children. He's impacting our future. And uh, Craig went through some things. So when Craig was going through what he was going through, I was going through my ACL with surgery and, you know, he doesn't even know it, but he motivated me because I, I I couldn't take a day off knowing what he was going through. I'm like, yo, you know, Craig's going through what he's going through is life threatening. I've just got a, a knee injury. There's no excuse for me to not go in here and do what I need to do to get back on the field. So um watching him go through that, it helped me just to keep going. Cause you have days when you don't want to go. Um, you know, you, you right. want to just, you know, kind of soak and you know be depressed, but that's the day you need to get up and keep going. You know what I mean? So right. shout out to him for real. All right. Shout out. He said, appreciate. He said, appreciate you, big cuz. <laughs> he know it, man. Appreciate him. I appreciate him. We all do. You know it. Yeah. Hey, that's 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 wonderful. Yes, sir. So uh talk about you know going to the uh Shrine Bowl. Did you play in the Shrine Bowl? Yeah. I did not. I was heartbroken. What? Because I, I knew I was gonna get in there. I just knew it. But uh, yeah, no, they chose. But the guys, they, we were stacked that year, man. The guys they chose, you know, were all good guys. I think they chose the guy from Spartan. I think his name was Rodney. I can't remember his last name. I think his name was Rodney. Then you had Antoine e. Smith, who had I think three thousand yards rushing that year. Walter Jamie Burrow. Scott had about two thousand yards. Yeah, Walter Burrow. Jamie mm-hmm. Scott had about two thousand yards that year. So I think they took four guys. The guys they took, I mean, you can't be like. Oh no! How do you choose him over J Mart? Yeah. We were just stacked, and luckily yeah. my coaches, um, my coaches, they put me into the north south consideration too. So I got to have that experience because some guys' coaches put him in for the Shrine Bowl, and so when the north south came around, and you didn't make the Shrine Bowl, you didn't make you know the the, the north south game either. So man, um, north south was. A, from what I hear, what I know, a lot of people say, you know, it's, it's a lot more fun because we're at the beach. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Quincy Damn, Wicker, uh, Travis McFadden, Pacheco Nathan, JJ was there. JJ's a crazy dude, man. Eric Henry, Joe Call. Like, Yo. man, that was a stacked little team right there, man. Somerville. And, and uh, we won the game. I think uh, Eric got – no, Joe got the uh, player of the game, I believe. But uh, we had fun that whole week. It was it was awesome. It was dope. Okay. So Brian Thomas yeah. said it's dudes like Jay that got my son in love with football, Jonathan and Aries Curry. That's my Wait, buddy, right? They? That's my dog right there, man. Yep. Yeah, his son is a uh, senior at um at uh I'm about to say South Point Westwood, and uh, I'm looking forward to watching them play this year. He's uh, they finally go let him play some stand up the end. I want to see what he's gonna do coming up that edge. Let's go, bro. Cool. Hey, hey, uh, so so what other schools chose you and why you chose USC? Gangcock. I got my first letter from USC, uh, the end of my freshman or the beginning of my second semester freshman year. I got a letter from USC. Um, so they were there, they put their first kind of bid in. They didn't offer me that, but they, they just sent a letter, handwritten letter from Brad Scott. 
Um, and then I started going to games through my sophomore year. Um, I used to go in there and get gear, man. I had all the gloves, I had towels. I'd get a bunch of them, bring them back to the to the team. You know, I keep my ship and I give as much as I can out. Man, yeah. um, I was living a life back then. So they got on me first. Um, junior senior year, Tennessee, of course, Clemson, Tennessee, Georgia, Georgia Tech. I was in real heavy with Georgia Tech. They took Joe Burns and they left me alone. Virginia. When they had Tiki Barber, Tiki and Rondé, but Tiki was a man back then. Uh, yeah, East Carolina. Uh, then they had a, not Hardy. I think Hardy. I think Hardy was running back back then. He was nasty. He ran through Carolina one year. Um, and then uh, North Carolina State. My boy Raymond. Raymond ended up going there. He balled out. He did. He did good there. Uh, Notre Dame, they came in my senior year, wanted me to play DB. Uh, I believe that's about it. What about Clemson, man? Clemson, they offer you? Yeah, they offered me. Um, man, they offered me. And then signing, I didn't hear from them. I, well, I didn't go to their visit. I went to Carolina. I committed, and I didn't take their visit. So they kind of laid off of me. Um, Rick, Rick Basaccia, he called me like the morning of signing yeah. day. He, Trying to flip me, I'm like, man, I ain't even talked to you, coach. So, deuces. You know what I mean? Oh, wow. But uh, I'm, I'm sure. I don't know, man. I, I don't know if I would have played up there, Clemson. Y'all had some ballers up there too, man. Yeah, James, James Austin, James was booming yeah, yeah. back in the day, man. Wow. Keith Kelly, come on, man. They had some yeah. stuff up there. Yeah, Diamond, I bet Diamond was the Diamond Anderson. Diamond, yeah, you remember yeah. him? Yeah, he yeah. was there too. It was loaded back in the day, bro. I don't know. Jalen Butler said, "What was your biggest motivation?" Got my battery about to go out. Let me uh, go back inside and make it loud. But my biggest okay. motivation. Yeah. Oh man, that's a. I, I don't know. I just loved football. I loved you know, being. I loved that I was good at it. What's up, Jalen? I loved that it was a challenge sometimes. Mm-hmm. Can you guys hear me? Yep. Yeah, let me see. All right. Can you see me still? Sorry. Yep. Uh, but what kept me motivated was just my love for sport and my love for competition. And uh, I put those, you put those two together with anything in life, man, and I think you're going to be pretty good at whatever, you, with whatever that thing may be. Talent does help. But uh, yep. having a love, that's what keeps you motivated. I, I didn't, I didn't come up rough, so I didn't, you know, I didn't, you know, necessarily want to put my mom in a house or nothing like that. I just love playing football, man. From the day I started, really. Word. So, uh, talk about um, getting into the game, cops playing at USC. Who were some of the guys that took you under their wing? Oh um, man. Probably the wrong guy, maybe Troy Hambrick, but <laughs> Troy, <laughs> Troy was. You end up being teammates with you at Dallas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same. He didn't, he didn't change. But you know, Troy, he was a very outspoken person, and um, they say his brother was ten times worse, but he was a very outspoken person. So I learned from him. You know, sometimes you got to speak your mind. Uh, Boo Williams, you know. He was the guy that kind of tra you know, trash talking, but also, hey man, read this guy, read that guy, Wright Jordan, um, uh, Anthony Wright, you know, uh, those Zola Davis, those are some of the guys. That not necessarily took you in, but they looked after you and they taught you ins and outs, you know, how to move around, how to navigate, you know, being a student athlete, uh, you know. And then, you know, but I had a bunch of buddies, good buddies there, too, that uh, you know, helped, we kept each other alive. Cedric Williams, uh, Frank McCullough, Antoine, you know, Nate, Jamie, can't name everybody, Rotten Brewer, D. White, uh, Travell, uh, man, uh, Faison. Faison didn't quote it, you know, Sean Faison did one of the top EBs at South Carolina, man. He, 
Yep. He, you know, he was just in the he's in the Hall of Fame. Yep. But those are some of the guys with Sheldon Brown. So I was gonna say uh, Sheldon Brown. How about playing with those two in the secondary? Because I think y'all were in the field at the same time. Yeah, so my sophomore and junior year red shirt. Um I was in like we like a three man rotation. Willie Alford and Rashad with starters. And I would kind of rotate in, you know, in and out with them. You know what I'm saying? I would kind of rotate in and out with them. Uh you know, every other series. So yeah, at times I'd be on the field with Rashad, Willie, Rashad or Rashad or Willie. Yeah, you know, Nick Sheldon was always out there on the right corner, and then you had uh Andre Goodman on the left corner. We're talking nine, ten year vets in the NFL. Um, and right behind him was a guy barking up their tree, Kevin House. A lot of people don't know about Kevin House, but he had like a three, four year career in the league as well. And he didn't have much tape to show. He just, his dad played. Kevin Senior played at uh, Tampa Bay. But, you know, he, he was just a guy that earned his shot. Uh, he you know, he played for a couple of years, so he was with DeAndre Allen, you know, playing in the league for a little while. He played in that second year, so he was very, very talented, well coached in second year. John Gudekins was DB, was corners and safeties, and we had uh, Dave Robertson, probably one of the, you know, the smartest coaches you don't know of. Wow, cool. So, <clears throat> so Lou Holtz was your coach. Um, can you talk about that era right there? I know you went there. Gamecocks had their name on the back of their jerseys. When you got there, they took them off. You know, y'all went to Adidas. You know, Willis talked about that on the, on the previous episode. So elaborate on that environment, that yeah, culture sure. with, with, with uh, Lou Holt. Some people didn't like it. Man. A lot of people didn't like it, but I guarantee a lot of people apply his principles, mm -hmm. you know, respect them and apply his principles, you know, to their life and to their coach, their coaches, they apply to their, their team. He had this card, uh, you know, with, with the principles, all the principles, principles that we were going to need to turn around the program. Um, I wish I still had that card, but I'm sure somebody, somebody in the chat watching, they, they'll, they'll, they'll talk about it too. And a lot of people still had this card, but if you just apply this card to your life, I mean, to your coaching career, whatever it is, you know, things will work out for you. So, Lou, he, you know, he, he was uh, a lot of people, he, he was a feisty man. I just say that he was a very feisty fella, but not bite his tongue. And the first thing he need, he knew he needed to do was to get Troy Ever got in there because they, they were like the same personality. They, they, did not bite your tongue for anybody. Um, and, and you know, Lou's gonna do some things, say some things that, that's gonna rough your feathers. And, and he pretty much just trying to see what you're made of, you know. But this is the time when the time started to change where you can't just say what you want to, to a player just because you coach. <laughs> so that was probably the last generation because yeah. I think at the same time around Spreewell got into it with buddy <laughs> Carlismo. I think that's about the same time. So I, I think think about it, y'all ain't never thought about that, but yeah that's about the time when when you know coaches, you know players start saying all right man hold up now you done MF me three ten too many times coach you know I'm mean? coming at my and the guy started teeing off on the coaches literally so um, I think because Lou had been gone like three, four years. I think out of out of a uh, coach, so the coach probably changed for a little bit because the Lou that I had two years later is a totally different Lou, totally different. Man. So, and I think you know that's probably why the program went the way it did because I, I don't. I guess maybe he couldn't adjust to uh, uh, the change in the tide. You just can't tell you know kids. You know, that's what like I got said. That's when people started getting a little bit, you know, smarter and said, I'm not going to just run through a brick wall just because you say so. You know what I mean? Um, as a coach now, you have to find different ways to motivate your kids. It can't be yell at them every time they do something wrong. You also have to motivate them with, you know, with gifts or, you know, prizes. Or, you know, cause it's, it's a, I guess it's a prize-orientated type of generation. They, they, 
and then they're not necessarily money, but they like prices. They like prices for short of the work, pretty much. And that's just the you can yell at it and, and argue with it all day, but that is just where we are as a, a as a as a culture now. You know what I'm saying? So as a coach, good coaches, they evolve with the culture. And that's probably why Bobby Bowden did the last moments he did at one place. Same thing with Joe Paterno. Uh, and, you know, nowadays, um, I'm trying to think of a guy that's long tenure. I mean, Stoops, he was at Oklahoma forever. So those are the guys that learn how to change the time. That's what you You got to do a TikTok. Right. You gotta go. You gotta go viral. You gotta do a little TikTok dance or something. I don't know, man. You know, so the kids yeah, like man. that. They like it. They do. Yep. So, uh, go ahead, KJ. Yeah, yeah. What I was about to say is, I, I mean, I know you played safety in college level. Did you Did you miss being on our offensive side, playing offense in so, high school? There are times when you know I'm like, man, what if I just would have stuck it out and running back? What if I would? Transferred to South Carolina State to play running back. Running back is my natural position. I had to learn how to play safety. I was a good athlete. Luckily, I'm a good athlete. You know, safety in high school and safety in what I was playing in college is two different things. You know what I mean? It's two different things. So, um, you know what I mean? Like like I said, I was athletic enough to make the change and, and be good at it. But when I got the ball in my hands, it's, it's a Totally different world. It's, it's 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 it was always easy to me. That didn't mean I worked hard. I was great, but getting five yards was just easy. Seemed so easy. To me. You know what I mean? Making the first guy miss was just so easy. Man, I, I had a very explosive first step. I wasn't a four three guy. I was maybe four five. I did run a four four seven and yeah, football speed, football quickness. You know, all you need is quickness in like a, a small area and. and as the game goes along, that five, six, seven yards start gets the DB start to start, you know, getting out of the way. You start the you know, that dead leg you did in the first half. Now you can do it the other way. The DB going that way. So um, running back was, was just something natural to me, and um, I never really had anybody that, that grew me. It was just always just me figuring things out on my own. I didn't have coaches. I didn't have a trainer they had today. With the footwork and stuff like that, we didn't have that back then. Um, and there was definitely no trainers, you know, taking you under the wing and teaching you how to, you know, run different schemes, different zones, and all that. I was just, I just figured it out on my own pretty much. And a lot of guys, not really anybody had anybody to groom them back then. Um, I just had coaches calling plays because, you know, they, 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 that there was a guy that knew my style and uh coach knew my style and knew how to, he, he called Mary Mazel. He knew the plays to call. Hey, I, I can't say he didn't, he grew me, but he knew what plays I was good at. He knew what this was doing. He always, you know, put us in a, and I had a very huge office line. My office line was probably the biggest in the state. It was bigger than Clemson and Carolina. Now, I ain't going to say they was all you know, 300. Some of them were like 250, but we had a couple of guys. We had at least three guys that were 300 pounds. And uh, so I was going to have a huge line too. Go, 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 go. It wasn't all me, not even not even close. Um, but yeah, it's part of me thinks about what if I would have stuck it out. And I'm pretty sure I'm confident I could have made it to the league as a running back. You know, if I would have gone to state with Buddy, I think I would have had a thousand yards a year. Easy. I would work. Use about 30 touches a game, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah I would, I, that's one thing you want to go out work me in that football field and that weight room. You know, I, would go, I love football that much, and I wasn't going to allow my laziness to, you know, make me miss a good opportunity. Yeah. KJ had to make the same transition from running back or receiver to cornerback. You know? <laughs> yep. So, you know, I mean – it's it's, it's kind of it's kind of uh, different. You got to run backwards, full speed. Dark man behind you. You used to running away from somebody, so you know that's a, right. that's a big big skill set you got to have in order to do that. So uh, talk about um some of the players to help you develop into a corner. Uh, 
Rashad face. Uh, well, actually, it was uh, a safety. It was like a, a, a nickel position. Uh, but watching Rashad and watching Willie, watching how they operate, watching them, uh, I just try to feed off of them. First, I'll try to, you know, I stole a, maybe I stole a little move or two, but then I started to work on what can make me set myself apart from what they do. And so I just started becoming a, a, a solid tackle. I just worked on my tackle. Um, I tackled D. Watt on his own, out open. That's, that was hard to do back then. Um, Freddie Millens, I, I remember getting him down one time. I met Travis Henry in the hole one time. I didn't knock him back. He knocked me back. It was more like a stalemate, but y'all remember Travis Henry, Tennessee. Um, I was a very solid tackler. I was wild tackling my sophomore year. He used to get mad at me. I'm one of the guys that's coming in hitting everybody. Um, so they used to yell at me my sophomore year. So that motivated me to, all right, let me come up with uh, Let me work on my footwork and get you know better control of my body. So my junior and senior, I started getting really good at tackling and having solo tackles, taking a guy down by myself. Um, first of all, I try to be the first guy there. Once I get there, you going down. I just had this determination that you're not getting off, get, getting away from me. I think Ernest Green was the only guy that legit uh, broke my tackle. He still farmed me, man, I, like I was a little kid. Uh, Ernest Green, we played in Florida. Coming off the edge, I think I got him, and he just t- took his hand. Put it on the side of my neck and just threw me down on the ground. Man, it's mm. the only guy that legit ran through. But Who he, he was? was Ernest Graham. He was uh, my. He was not class of '98. Joe Gillespie, him and Joe Gillespie came in the same year. I think he ended a red shirt. Um, and uh, so you know, he ended a red shirt. And Joe did, but uh, they were both top running backs in their state. So I think Ernest was. Florida, Joe was Mississippi. Cool. So, who, what, t- talk about how it was coming out on the field with that 2001. Man, <laughs> every game. I, I, I was the first guy out every time. You hear me? For real. First dude out every time, man. I was me and Rashad. Well, for a while, me and Rashad being in the front, but he started getting in the back. Like later on, I guess he wasn't. He was too cool. But every chance I could, I was at the front. I was getting rowdy, and I was the first one try one of the first ones try to run through that because I knew we had to get ready for for the kickoff for kick kickoff return. I was okay. a special right. player too, so yep. I had to get for him anyway. So why not just run out here and be the first one out? You know what I mean? Yep. Getting everybody hyped. So uh, it was it's it's I don't you really can't describe it, man. It's one of the best. Um, Coming out of all college football, um, even as a recruit, man, it's just chills and it's fine. You first hear that thing hit, that 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 little beat drop, man, it's it's a great feeling. One of the greatest feelings uh, that I've ever experienced. I've been able to experience in my life. At, at the safety spot, who was the hardest quarterback and wide receiver you had to face? <laughs> Rex Grossman. And all three, we had Taylor Jacobs, <laughs> Reshay Caldwell, and um, he, he just uh, Jabbar Gaffney. Yeah, easy, easy. They ran it up on us, man. They ran it up, especially my my junior year. We black, well, the crowd blacked out. Uh, we didn't because every time we blacked out, we got blacked out. So the crowd blacked out, and um, I don't know what. Luke said something. Uh, I think Luke said something to get Spurry going that week. I can't remember what it was. I don't know if he said something to get him going or Spurry just wanted to be, you know, a butthead. But he he was literally throwing with his first team, you know, fourth quarter and still throwing. They were up by like 30, 40 points. I think we scored like 17, 48, 17, 56, 17. I can't remember, but they ran it up. Um, Jabbar is the only guy that I saw just he he's the only receiver I've seen can make anybody look silly, man. He was just that he was just so good in college. And Rex would put it, 
anywhere Rex would put it, Joe, you know, he would Jabari would go get it. Then you had Riche. Then you had Taylor Jacobs. So you couldn't double anybody. So they all three of them guys always had one on ones. They they had field days with us. Okay. Cool. So um talk about um the bowl games that you guys participated in. How many bowl games did you play in? Played in two. So we played I played in the Outback. The uh, back-to-back Outback Bowl game, mm-hmm. 2001, One. 2000 and was two. the season, 2001, and then 2002, uh, Bowl games versus Ohio State. Uh, the first year, uh, they had a uh, that they had a coaching change after that year. Matter of fact, I think the, the way we beat them, they fired that coach. I can't remember the name right now, but they had a pretty good team. They were bigger than us, and all we you could just see though they they didn't respect us. They we were smaller, but we were fast, and we uh, we had a train. Our, our uh, street coach was our street coach. No, that Charlie, not Charlie, Charlie Stroll was our defensive coordinator. Um, uh, coach had us. Uh, he had us. He, he came from Illinois. He played. He coached in Illinois. Played in Illinois. Um, no, I'm sorry, he played at Florida, coached at Illinois. So he knew the style of football that, um, that Lou wanted us to kind of be in shape for. Fast, right. but strong. So we had you know, Coach Tripp, he had us in shape. Uh, when Coach came in, he, he had us in shape as well, but he had us lifted heavy. So we we got bigger and we got stronger. So even if we were small, Pat Moore. Pat Mo, P Mo. So Coach P Mo got us, he got us strong. Um, so we were already fast, we were already light. P Mo got us strong. He had a squad of 400. Yeah, mm-hmm. some guy, Rashad was, Rashad was the four, was the 400 guy. He, he benched 400 and he squatted 400. A lot of people don't know that. Rashad was a very mm-hmm. strong dude. Um, but we had more linemen lifting over 350, 400 pounds with Pat Moore. And um, so, just because you're big, you know, it, it didn't intimidate us. We played, we played in the SEC, guys. We played against Florida, was big and fast. Played against Tennessee, was big and fast. Played against Mississippi State, was big and fast. Uh, Arkansas, big and fast. So we see it all year. So we don't, we didn't really get the disrespect. We kind of did because it's Ohio State. This is when. Uh, Michigan and Ohio State's in the top 10 every year. The SEC really ain't popping yet. You got Florida kind of doing their thing. Mm-hmm. Tennessee was kind of doing their thing. Mm-hmm. But it was like one or two schools. It ain't like it is now. It wasn't like it was now. Mm-hmm. Like it is At now. that time, Florida Tennessee was going winning the SEC championship and winning the national right. championship. Maybe LSU right. a little bit, you know? Um, they didn't really go, get off until um, – uh, Mid 2000 until Saban, yeah, until Saban got there. I think they won their first title in 03. So, 05. 05? Somewhere what? around there. It wasn't 03, right? Ohio State. Because the Hurricane, Miami Hurricanes had they run too. Right, right. Miami and then Ohio State. So, the, the crazy thing about the Outback Bowls um, is the year after our second Outback Bowl, Ohio State's playing in the national championship. The mm-hmm. new coach, Maurice Claret. Uh, Chris Gamble, remember Gamble? Chris yep, Gamble. Gamble. Yep. Play, I think he's playing receiver at DB there. So um, I don't know what changes they did, but they got it going that next year and they won a national championship. But back to the, the first half of that bowl, they didn't respect us. And, they, and Brewer really took it personal because they, you know, Ohio State, he's Mr. Football of Ohio State. Yeah. I'm playing golf with him. Uh, when I'm playing, I'm playing golf with him, and I just started asking him what was his stats like. And it, it, the dude was putting up video game numbers, right? And but they didn't even recruit him, you know, didn't even give him a, a, a letter. I don't think he got a letter, he might got letters, but I don't think they ever offered. Him. And so he took it personal. And every chance he could that game, man, he went off on them boys and he carried us, and you know. We, Defense played, but we played off his energy, man. We were so hyped to see him getting off that we just wanted to go out there and just obliterate him. I think we, I think that game was twenty four seven, but 
Like it, it was just total domination. There's, there's nothing they did that scared us that day. There's nothing that they did that, that worried us. Um, so that was the first year. Second year, um, they were ready. And that was a game that came down to a field goal. Ryan Weaver, he had like maybe three feet to spare. You know, the last seconds of that game, um, it wasn't that game for us. So, um, Tampa, you know, Tampa was always fun. I think one year, I think the first year it was cold. Um, I mean, it was the second year. When we came back, it was snowing one year. And it was cold down there. But you know, Tampa's a good, fun place. I, I lived there back in 2007, 2008. Great town, um, fun place to be. Outback Bowls, first class, world class. We ate good every night, please believe it. Um, and they took they took good care of us. So we had some some uh, some great moments as a team as well, too. I tell you what lit Brewer up. We watched Gladiator the night before that game. And then me and him, our handshake is strength and honor. We did we, we sit by each other that night watching him. And we were just hyped, man. He had to look in his eye and then we created strength and honor. That off of that. That was a handshake back then. So or in that movie. So we still do that to this day. But man, he went out that that little fire in him and he went off of the board that next day, man. Shout out to him. Yep, yep. Shout out to Corey uh Brewer, Ryan Brewer. Uh, talk about um, going into the NFL, you know, getting the combine ready, getting combine ready, about to, you know, either get drafted or free agent. Talk about that process and your mind state, right. what you were going through then. Right. So in my training, um, I wasn't like a top uh, prospect. So I didn't go out and get an agent. I, I didn't go out and hire an agent to send me somewhere and do all that stuff. Um, I didn't have the money to me. So. I, I signed with them, but you know, I didn't. They didn't, they didn't give me any money because they know I'm going to be. They're probably going to be a free agent anyway, so it worked out. But I worked out with the guy there, with their trainer, and uh, I, I, I I didn't feel like I was getting what I needed, and so in the middle of the training, I called Mono. That's the thing that happened. I called Mono, and that put me down for like a week, and I lost about five, ten pounds, which was probably helped. And then I got the track guy, uh, and uh, I started working with a guy named Savannah, uh, helper. He was working for Carolina back then, uh, but he he had been telling me, we need to train, we need to need to train. So finally, when I got back from being sick, I started training, for him, training with him, and he helped me get that time down to a four four seven. Um, so let's fast forward to draft day. Uh, I've talked to Chicago, um, and I talked to maybe two other teams. I didn't talk to a lot of people. I talked to Chicago, I think Denver, uh, and, and maybe Carolina. Um, so they, you know, they were all like, you know, late round draft pick, if that, um, if not free agent. So Chicago probably calls me it's Thursday or Friday. I think I talked to them. Sunday is a draft. That back then is one day. Um, they call me, I believe, Friday. Uh, fast forward to Sun. Sorry, Saturday. I think it was two days back then. Saturday and Sunday. Saturday. Uh, let's see. Everybody get drafted. in the next day, they, I'm in church, and I think the draft ended while I was in church. And uh, so I went to my agent. Um, and uh, so we're sitting there waiting on Chicago to call, but you know, they say they will take a, a safety. They took a guy out of Florida, Todd. I can't remember his last name. But he, was, he was a ball. I think he was like fourth or fifth in, in tackles that year. But anyway, Chicago is a not call because they took him, basically. And then um, so we're sitting there and they're like, well, you got an hour to figure out what we're going to do. After this hour, you're going to have to do a, you have to go in and do another workout. So, but if you, if somebody calls you this hour, in this time frame, you take that because you get to go to training. Now. So, Cowboys came out of nowhere and uh, they gave me uh, my free agency shot. Um, so like, they called me before that time frame, I think it was like six o'clock, seven o'clock. 
and they called me before that time frame and so i took it and uh it was, it was like two thousand twenty five hundred dollars there's more money you know that i just like the second most money i'd ever had at one point in time so i can't take it so uh they gave me my shot and uh me and uh sean smith a lot of a lot of people know Big Big but we call Big Buddy back there. Sean Smith, they brought us in together. Sean, he didn't do much in Carolina, but when he got to Dallas, he saw the lights and he started working out. Dude got strong. He ends up having a 10 year career in the league. A lot of people know him from getting in the fight with Brady, uh, the, uh, Brady from, uh, I can't remember the last name, from Notre Dame or whatever, but he ends up getting a fight with that guy. <laughs> like, the dude, the dude, the, he, he's he's a funny guy, and I love him, man. Um, oh, but Marco yeah, so, Hutchinson on said, "Big Buddy, Big Buddy Rope." Yeah, that's big buddy. Said, that's yes, what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. So uh, actually, yeah. I come in that camp with uh, Jason Witt, okay. Terrence Norman, uh, yep. Roman was in that class. I came yep. up with them guys. Yep. Brady uh, Brady James was was live third round pick. Uh, Terrence was the first round pick. Uh, Roma was, I think he was six round maybe, or, or a free agent. I think mm-hmm. Wick, I can't remember what Rick, I think Wick was third or second or third. I can't remember. Okay. Yeah. So. That's uh, Brian Elam say DBU. DBU. Yeah. Right. So me, Marco, talking about me. Marco said Quinn. Right, Brady Quinn. Brady Quinn from Notre Dame. Yeah, 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 yeah. Elon, man, Elon was a was another guy that you know probably uh, isn't happy with how things were down in Carolina with him and you know, his cousin's relationship with Luke. But Elon, man, yeah, you know, I know Dante Robinson. Yeah, you should have known Elon too. You know, Elon, yeah. Elon, he did a great job as a special team player. He's athletic. He can run all day, and he was smart. And uh, it didn't go, it didn't go this way there. So it is what it is. But uh, so in Dallas, uh, I think I, I and I'm never Roy there was is there. Uh, and I'm with them guys, and I'm watching them guys play, and I'm working hard. I'm making tackles in practice. I'm running up on linemen. Yeah, what's it like, man? You can't be running up on the linemen in the league. You're not gonna have a long career. I'm like, man, this with the way that Dave Roberts trained us, that stuff was like second nature. I didn't think about running up on the line. Cedric Wade would tell you that I don't think twice I didn't think twice about running up on the line. Just the mentality that I had. Um, just throw my body around. And I but I know how to protect myself you know, somewhat. Um but I felt I really felt like I had a really good camp and, and I played as hard as I could as a safety. They even had Woody Dassler there. He was playing safety that year. Um, I think that's probably what, what got me off the team. I don't know. Um, but I thought I had a really good camp. And um, after the um, – we had a game versus Houston. After the Houston game, I kind of saw it because uh, they, they took me off the special team to practice. Somebody told me when they do that, they're about to cut you. Um, so I just – as a – I didn't know how to do. I didn't know how to handle the the, the, the after the, you get cut. I didn't. And, and my team, I think they had broken up. My agency had broken up, and I didn't know about it. And I should have signed with a guy that was uh, one of my one of my teammates, with his agent, because that guy knew how to get people on the team, get get people tryouts and stuff like that. I should have went with him, but I didn't know the guy. They had a lot less experience in that field, so um, that's probably you know why I didn't you know, get a second chance. But I, I thought I had some good tape um, when I, was, I remember when I was getting my stuff out of my locker. The trainers, everybody kind of like you know why, why they cut you. So and I, I worked my tail off. Because one thing I told y'all I, I I would do is I would work my tail off to, uh, uh, for football, and I was not going to have a, a regret that I didn't handle it on my end. So I gave it my all. It 
probably stuck with me for a little, you know, a little bit longer than, than uh, I should have let it. But that's what most people, you know, have dreams and kind of don't go their way. Um, you know, nobody really teaches you how to uh, handle that that loss. So you kind of got figured out on your own. You know what I mean? And yep. That's what I had to do. It's tough. Yep. So um, what I was going to say is um, what's the biggest lesson you learned um, from, you know, playing sports, um, having teammates, you know, seeing other people's careers go up and down, um, winning, losing games. What has all that taught you in the end? Hmm. What? Um, be accountable, you know, not just for what you do good, uh, you know, but, you know, things that you probably didn't do your best at, you know, hold yourself accountable. Take credit for it when you need to take credit. You know, whether it's good or bad, that's accountability. Um, hard work. Hard work. Hard work is going to get, it, it turns into, it basically turns into luck. If you keep working hard, if anybody that's a millionaire or, you know, ended up being great at something, they started with hard work and persistence and intent and seeing you know visual visualizing like people said they used to see themselves doing stuff and then boom they're doing it um when you put all those things together there's no telling you know what you could uh accomplish um and then loving what you do finding a way to uh to love or finding something that you love and, and make it a part of your life as much as possible and you know sometimes you have to you have to fight to uh you know, keep that thing going you know football is a is something that you just that, that, that most people just can't snap their fingers and they'll be good at it and, and stay in the league i think and, and stay good at it i think you know maybe that's what's happening with uh with davion um he was so great in college you know maybe maybe he didn't you know uh, uh do some work in certain areas to better himself and, and to keep bettering himself i don't know nobody the injuries have you know, plagued him um but when you, when you have something that you love um, you should respect it you should uh you know do what you need to do to keep it a part of your life um and, and, and there's no telling you know, like I said, what you can do or how far you can go. Uh, but, you know, you know having, it gives you purpose. Loving what you do helps give you purpose. You know what I mean? So, My boy still one of the hardest workers I ever saw. My guy looked little like the whole <laughs> 13 years old. Andrew Marshall. That's my, that's my childhood best friend, man. We got into so much back in the day. We met hey, you guys, years. make sure you like and subscribe. We on YouTube. Yes, please, please like and subscribe on YouTube. And we got a pair for you as well. We appreciate y'all tuning cool. in. Go ahead. Go ahead, big darkness. I see you got your name in Dalton <laughs> on here today. Where Actually, you get that from? Craig. Who gave you that name? Craig. So that's around uh what, that's from Dave Chappelle. Everybody know Dave yeah, Chappelle. Yeah, I know that. Yeah. The uh the uh Rick James story. Yeah. But um Craig kind of he, he was doing every time I come every time we see each other every night, he darkness, darkness. And then when Instagram comes out, I'm like, all right, I'm not just call myself darkness, but spell it, you know how I spell it, D-A-W-Q-N-E-S-S. -S. And I'm black. Yeah. So I I embrace this beautiful drip we call melanin. You know what I mean? <laughs> Hey, I embrace. He said, "Left out law patch him and his brother still look like bodybuilding." <laughs> Word, yeah, man. No, that's, we that's appreciate you. Yeah, man, we appreciate you coming on the show, man. Is there anybody you like to shout out before we head out? Like uh, family right. members, friends, coaches, teammates. Man. All right, so I got my brothers on here. I saw Lionel was on here. Craig. Uh, this is I wear the BU for you fitness shirt. Savelle Newton goes to you over on the grand. He's got a great uh, a great movement over there. Uh, help you get in shape while you're over there. Take your son or your daughter over to Carlos Spikes with um, dog work. Don't lie. Um, out of the boxing gym, you get your boxing on. You can drop off your kids, get them trained, and then you go get your lift on over in the St. Louis Plaza. Um, all those guys over there, they're doing it. Um, 
Jamie Scott Fitness, shout out to them. State of the art fitness facility. One of the probably the best facility in South Carolina. Uh, state of the art. I, I went to a place down here in Miami. Uh, what is it called? It's on the tip of my tongue. But anyway, you know, Miami's got big money down here. Um, so people spend money, Equinox, they would place Equinox. And I'm just looking at the program. I'm like, man, this is the same stuff Jamie's doing. So he had a game up there with him. Catch this sport, my boy Aries Curry. Um, get your kids get faster, get their agilities right. Hit him up. Uh, let's see, Steel Hands Brewery. They, mm-hmm. they showed us a good time a couple of weeks ago. Alex and I believe Ashley, they looked out for us. Um, uh, life insurance, I'm uh, selling life insurance. Uh, let's, uh, we're doing uh, fuel expense mostly, and uh, we do have some uh, some other programs that we focus on fuel expense. So. If anybody wants to buy a policy for their parents, you know, knock that, uh, knock that, that funeral home charge down to you know about five to eight thousand dollars. You know, reach out to me, Jr. Martin three nine at gmail That's for life insurance, final expense, funeral. I'm trying to get them knocked down to eight thousand dollars for the low. You know, you can reach out to me for that. Um, my mom, my dad, I love you guys. Um, my family that I missed out, I did, that I didn't shout out. Chris Kane, Trey King, Tony, uh, Nikki, Elsie, Julie. Happy birthday, Julie. I love yes. you. Yes. Everybody uh, subscribe. Subscribe on YouTube. Everybody subscribe. Uh, my, my Dunlap family, Wanda, uh, man. Steven, Steve, Uncle Steve, Cousin Steve, everybody. I love y'all. I miss y'all. And uh, thank you guys for the opportunity to come over here and tell my story. Appreciate you guys. Man, no problem, man. We love to have you back on, as always, man. Remember playing against you in high school. Great memories, man. Tough running back. You know, it was great times. Um, Just like I say, man. For everybody that's been watching, man, we appreciate you guys tuning in and commenting. Like and subscribe. Make sure you hit that notification button. Also, like, stop by right. on Instagram. You can get your sports uh, sports shop twenty seven apparel. You get you a hoodie or a tee. Right. And um, you know, we just keeping it. We just keeping it together for the community, man. Just making sure the kids have something motivated, inspired, and keep doing. We all were teammates together at one point, so we might as well keep it going, right? Right. Yes, sir. Right. Going, man. You, yep. Also, subscribe to us on uh, Spotify and Deezer. Follow us on uh, Facebook. And um, our motto is, it's not how you start. It's how you finish. So, wear your mask. Be safe. And we'll see you next episode, okay? Other than that, stay tuned. See you later. Peace. Peace, y'all. Okay.